Good evening. It is 6.30, so we've got quite a bit to, to go over tonight. We'd like to go ahead and get started. Welcome to the Jackson, Jackson County Board of Education October meeting. We're grateful to be here at the East Jackson Elementary School. I'm sure there is a, a lot to be, be applauded and, and talked about as far as what's going on here. We appreciate you allowing us to, to be in, in your presence. I understand you have someone to do the Pledge of Allegiance for us. Savannah Perry and Leela Hutt. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for the East Jackson Pledge. <laughs> we, the we the Eagles of East Jackson, Jackson Elementary pledge to respect and help each other, take care of our school, and be responsible for achieving our goals. Thank you. You may be seated. <laughs> Thank you, girls. Appreciate that. Hope you've all had a chance to look at the agenda uh, and the uh, minutes from last meeting. Start with the minutes. Uh, do I have a, a motion that we accept the, those minutes as written? So moved. And a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Dr. Howard, is there any changes to the agenda we need to discuss? No changes. Do I have a motion that we accept the agenda as written? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Hi, right. Dr. Howard, turn right. it over to you. Very good. I think we just have one mic, so if you don't mind, I'm just so that you can hear, we'll put it between us. There we go. <laughs> I just want to, again, thank Ms. Halley and her staff for having us here. It's always a pleasure to, to visit East Jackson Elementary School. What an outstanding uh, performance back there by our robotics students. Thank you all for letting us ask lots of good questions. And I saw some pretty amazing writing as I was coming in as well, so I know there's some great work happening here. And so I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Halley and Ms. Pennington and let you tell us a little bit about the highlights of what, ha what, are, what we are celebrating tonight at East Jackson Elementary School. Okay, thank you, Dr. Howard. I'm going to try to make this quick, but when you give us the mic, East Jackson Elementary has so many good things mm -hmm. to showcase, it's just hard to narrow it down to two or three. But tonight I wanted to focus on our robotics program, kindergarten through fifth grade, and then highlight our writing workshop using the Lucy Calkins program because I wanted the board to be more familiar with that since we do it in all the elementary schools now. So at this time, if I can have um, Ms. Rogers and Ms. Brock come up with her, their students so they can introduce our students that showcase the robotics from 6 to 6.30 tonight. And thank you, parents, for bringing them in tonight for this showcase. And is the mic loud enough? Can everybody hear? Because I can turn it up. Okay, I can turn it up. Yeah, it's on. I can turn it up. Um, we're excited to have you guys here tonight, and I'll just talk kind of loud because I'm not sure this microphone's working all that it's great. Working, but, it's working fine. Uh, is it better now? Awesome. Okay. Um, so we have students here that are from kindergarten through fifth grade, and we've been working with our STEM program for several years now, and I'm talking about different levels of robotics that we um, have been having our students try out different things and finally after a few years of kind of playing and exploring we figured out a few things 
to kind of have more of a bigger picture of what we really want our robotics program to be like here at the elementary school. Um, so what Ms. Brock and I wanted to share really quickly is just kind of a continuum of how we start in kindergarten and build up through fifth grade and um, with our robotics program. We take several different things into consideration when we're thinking about planning our curriculum out. We want um, our students to learn how to be programmers, so we start with some basic activities in kindergarten to teach programming. Um, and then we also talk about, we want them to experience what different types of robots are like and how different types of programs are used to program different ones. Um, and then we also think it's important to have that fine motor piece with learning how to do the construction and the building of the robots too. Um, and all of our activities that we do with our students, we take into consideration their standards for language arts, math, science, and social studies. And there's lots of different challenges and things that we can offer the students that incorporate um, those different activities. So we'll tell you a little bit about what we do at each grade level, and then we'll introduce you to our um, demonstrators. I said models earlier, but I don't think they like that <laughs> word. Um, so we'll introduce you to our demonstrators. So we'll start with kindergarten. All right, so for kindergarten, we had Owen Bouchard. Can you wave? Can you wave? And we had Corey Brock. Can you wave? And then we had a helper because kindergarten, sometimes you need a little helper. So we had Mackenzie Rhetoric help out with them. Um, so kindergarten, our goal really is just to do programming basics for kindergarten. They do, and they will be using the B-Bots. We haven't done that yet. We start the, we try to do, I don't know if you just said this a minute ago, but we try to do a, um, a different robotics uh, activity each um, semester in the year. So each grade level will have two activities a year with robots. So the first one for kindergarten, we're starting off with what you saw in the back, just having them use cards to physically make a program and then be able to follow it. So that's really what the kindergartner started out with. And then they will use B-Bots later on in the year to do a little bit more with the programming on the computer. Um, for first grade, we want them to use a separate device to program, and they're going to actually be um, writing their own program, and we focus on using um, LED lights, and their standard says they have to be able to create some type of alarm using sound or movement or lights, so the robot was a perfect way to do that, so we're going to um, integrate that into their sound unit um, at the end of this quarter, actually, and they're going to be using the Sphero Minis. We didn't have any first graders here tonight. Um, for second grade, we have three second graders with us. We have Ella Beecham, we have Emery Beecham, and we have um, McKen no, Michaela Renrick. Sorry, all three uh, Renrick girls are here and they all <laughs> helped us tonight. Um, and so for second grade, we just finished up learning about sun, moon, and stars, our space unit. So we really wanted to highlight how um, they use different types of robots in space. And so uh, with their program, they had to, on their own, figure out how to write the program, and it was a Blockly program. And the robot they used was Dash. But the big goal for us for second grade was to learn how to problem solve. So if their robot did not do what their program said it was supposed to do, they had to be able to follow the program themselves and then figure out what they needed to do differently. So um, we've kind of built in different levels of those skills for them with different robots. So now we'll highlight third through fifth. All right, so once we get to third grade, um, we move on up to a different program called Robo Robo, and um, we're fortunate to have those all across the county um, from a grant that we had, uh, uh, NSF grant, I think it was, is that right? Um, but so we have those, those um, robots that the kids, we start using them in third grade. The construction um, is a good challenge for third graders. It takes them a really long time to build them. They have lots of small parts. Um, so our real goal for third grade now that we've kind of played with them a few years is for them to learn how to program those robots but not focus so much on the building and construction part. Um, so we'll program, we'll have them do a unit after the upper grade students have built the robots. Um, so they learn how to focus on that. We also teach them how to, and you saw um, some of our fifth grade girls actually demonstrate an activity that we'll do with third grade later in the year because they haven't done it yet. Um, but we do a lot of geography with third grade with the robots. So they learn about the regions of Georgia and third graders also learn in social studies about latitude and longitude. So we have them locate different places on world map and um, using the latitude and longitude coordinates and then plan a trip around the world and let their robot figure out where they want to travel. And Ms. Palmer's here tonight. Her students did that earlier in the year. And then we have, um, we'll have them do a challenge later in the year as they learn about the different habitat regions of Georgia where they have to program their robots um, to tour the state. So third grade is a great year to do a lot of geography practice with them. And then our third graders will learn how to do um, forward and backward motions, right angle turns, and full circle turns. So we're kind of bringing some of their math standards as well. Then when we move on up to fourth grade, we keep that same kid in mind, but we let the kids start building the robots. So we have a big focus there on how do you follow written directions, because you all know from 
putting anything together or building anything, that's a challenging skill to learn. So if we can start teaching them how to read, not just words and numbers, but read pictures as well, um, then that's a good, a good building block for other things later on too. So we start to focus on the fourth in fourth grade on the construction, and then we bring in at how to do turns at any angle. If you watched some of the kids at the back earlier, you saw that some of them had gotten pretty good about figuring out the time scales for different angles, um, which is a huge math center for fourth grade. They have to learn how to use protractor and identify angles at different sizes. Um, so we teach them to do that in fourth, and then they also add kind of the lights and sound piece in fourth grade. And then we went, and that's um, with the Robo Robo program, there are three different different levels so we start with level one in fourth grade and then in fifth grade we try to move up to some of the level two standards so you saw our fifth graders and I'll just introduce all the fifth graders at one time we had you want to introduce yourselves or you want me to do it we have Madison who's another Renwick girl you can tell they all look the same right <laughs> and then we have Leela Huss and her mom Becky Huss is a teacher here as well and we have Savannah Perry and Caitlin Bouchard, and she's the sister of Owen from kindergarten. And then we had on the end, Casey Loggins, and Casey's mom is a teacher in our system as well, Kelly Loggins, and then Connor Dickerson. And um, they were demonstrating a social studies challenge that we do in fifth grade. They learned about the cattle trails and the economic importance of transporting cattle from Texas up to the railroads in Kansas, or Abilene, Colorado, wherever area they were trying to get to. And um, so they demonstrate what they know about their social study standards through using their robots. Um, and we try to move up, we hope to move up, we haven't tried level two in fifth grade yet, but that's our goal for the end of the year this year. And level two in our book series is that the kids will learn how to build robots that use different types of sensors, and then also to program a remote control that can then drive a robot, so you program the remote control instead of the robot. But we haven't tried that, so we're excited to try that. Um, this year. So anyway, um, if you ever want to come visit, we do at different times throughout the year. We share materials, so we kind of stagger things, but um, let us know. We would love for you guys to come watch. Thank you. Oh, you got something else that they want to tell, right? Okay. 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 Sorry. We were also going to tell you, um, we try to also branch out and do some of the robots in our after school club. So some other ways that kids get to experience robots at our school. We have a makerspace area that kids are allowed to go to at different times during the day. And in that makerspace area, we have um, Ozzybots, Robo Robos, Dots, Dash, and the Makey Makey Robots. So a lot of different ones that the kids can choose from and kind of do on their own independently, which is great. We also have a coding club that meets after school, Lego Learners, um, and both of those are designed to go ahead and get kids to start building, like we said, with that construction and work on that at a younger age. So we are very proud of our, our program. Thank, thank you. I not only want to brag, of course I want to brag on our students, so give them a hand, please. And I also want to brag on our two STEM teachers. They wear many, many hats at East Jackson Elementary, and I appreciate them being here tonight and their support. They're always willing to do whatever, and they always have me on my toes thinking about what's coming next and what we can do to better ourselves. So. Thank you to both of our teachers, Ms. Rogers and Ms. Uh, Bryce. Thank you. Okay, real quickly, and I'm trying to make this mic work because it will work when we tested it, but um, we just completed our fun run at East Jackson Elementary, and we did this over the past two weeks, and it's our only annual fundraiser for the year and we don't sell anything, we just have students running and taking pledges, and I wanna brag on our community, our parents and our students. We raised 40, over 40,000 cash in the two weeks wow. to support our yep. school this yep. year. Yep. So, um, thank you to our, uh, everybody involved in that process. We do have our fifth grade going to Camp Wasega this Wednesday. They go for two nights. They leave Wednesday morning and we'll come back Friday and that's an annual trip we do with fifth grade. And then we just completed last month our watchdog program where dogs of great students, I mean dads, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> dads of great students, um, we, I know we purchased 75 pizzas. I think we said fed about 500 people that night and it's a great turnout and we start November 1st and we will have a D 
dad of great students in the building every day from November 1st till the last day of school. So I applaud our parents, our dads for doing this. They're like our protection in the school building that day and they follow kids around, they mentor kids and work with kids on a daily basis. So that's great. At this time, I want to introduce to you our new assistant principal, Ms. Allison Pennington. And I just wanna say that working with her just this short amount of time, I think we really complement each other with our strengths and our weaknesses. And she's been a great team member for me. So I want to welcome her and let her talk about our wonderful writing program. Good evening. This year, uh, the, the system adopted the Lucy Calkins writing curriculum, and here at East Jackson, we have embraced this curriculum and the writing workshop um, method of teaching writing with open arms. Our teachers have worked so hard to make sure that writing is an exciting time for their students, and you would not believe the, just how the students have blossomed in writing this year. Uh, we have students that are deeply engaged in their writing, more so than we've seen in the past. And one thing that I think speaks to, to how the teachers and the students are feeling about it is earlier this year I was meeting with each grade level and I asked them to give me celebrations and things that they wanted to work on. And unanimously, every single grade level said that their celebration was writing workshop in their classrooms. And when I asked them why they wanted to celebrate writing, they said their students had a level of excitement that they'd never seen before and that they were getting pieces from their students that were just amazing. A lot of our success with the implementation of writing this year comes from our instructional coach, Ms. Lisa Ellis. Uh, she works really hard with our teachers to, to coach and to work alongside of them to plan engaging writing lessons. And she also works very closely with Amy Godfrey at the county level to ensure that teachers are getting the professional development they need to, in, to keep up the level of writing instruction that we strive for. This particular program is pretty intensive for teachers, but it allows for and encourages choice for students. And it also helps them in building stamina in their writing. We have students writing these really long pieces of writing. Um, but they're not only long, they're powerful. I'm sure as you came in, you noticed we did have some of our writing pieces on display. She went through and picked out some for you all to look at when you come through our building. Uh, but as we move forward this year, we cannot wait to see what our students are going to bring because already in the first nine weeks, we've had amazing, amazing success with this writing. So tonight we wanted to share just two of those pieces with you. We'd love to highlight them all, but we don't have all night. So right at this time, I'd like to ask Miss Grace Hatcher, a third grader, to come up, and Miss Leela Huss, a fifth grader, to come up, and they're gonna share their writing. And then we have a third grade teacher, Miss Jenny Palmer, and a fifth grade teacher, Miss Melanie McMurray, to speak on behalf of these students. So at this time, I'm gonna turn it over to Grace. And I may change out mics, because yeah. that one's a lot louder for the students. Yeah. Just a minute, because I want to make sure they hear you. Today, I am on vacation at Disney World. We are now at Hollywood Studios. We were heading to a rock and roller coaster. I was very excited because I was finally old enough to ride it. Plus, I was also scared too. It was because there was a loopy loop. But my dad said that I would not feel myself go upside down, but I would not see the scary sights because the ride is pitch dark. All the way there, my brother, Colin, and my sister, Faith, said that I would freak out. They love to give me a hard time. <laughs> I tried my hardest not to listen to them, but they would not keep their mouths closed. <laughs> Finally, we got inside. 
We watched a video to explain the ride. Then we went through a ginormous line. Finally, we got seated in our first car, in our car, the first one. It, I sat straight down with my daddy. I held his hand tight, afraid of what would come next. We sat there for five minutes, but it felt like an hour. Dad, when will we go? I asked my dad. Soon, he answered back. I was excited. I wanted to know what I would think of it. I want to go, I said. Soon, be patient, he answered. Again. I just, whoosh, it jerked us off. It was going so fast, I felt my eyes drying up. I was holding on to my daddy's hand so tight, if I held on any tighter, it might just fall off. Bum! Ow! I yelled. My dad was right. I would feel it. When, when we got off, I told my mom that I wasn't going again soon. Are you crying? My mom asked. I felt my eyes. There was dried up water on the sides. No, it was the ride, I explained. I'm glad you loved it, she answered. She was right. I did love it. Even though I wasn't going back soon, I was in love with Rock and Roller Coaster. <laughs> Miss Palmer, I have the honor of having that author in my classroom this year. Uh, just to say a little bit about Lucy Calkins, it uh, does an impressive job of creating a love, as you can tell, of telling and developing uh, small moment stories. So that's what one of Grace's small moment stories was, riding a roller coaster. And if you have grown up in the school with Lucy Calkins, if you are a third grader, you know how important it is to focus on the narrative, to tell your small moment in sequential order, and to bring that small moment to life. So I think you just saw a great example of someone bringing that small moment to life. Nice job, Grace. We've been camp Finland. Me and my cousins, Yuhani and Tapio, pulled our bikes out of the mini garage under the apartment building. I boarded my rented purple bicycle and pedaled up to where my dad was standing. Together, Yuhani, Tapio, and I rode across the, the road with our fathers walking. We got off our bikes at the bottom of a long, steep hill. Our dads waded part way down, but us kids went all the way to the top, pulling our bikes along behind us. I watched as Hani went down, gliding along the road with ease. Tapia was next, going down just as easily as his brother. Next was me. Eight eyes watched as I got on the purple bike and rode down the hill. The road was very smooth. I felt like I was flying. Then I realized I couldn't stop. The highway stretched in front of me, on the other side of the apartment. I weighed my options. I certainly couldn't go into the road. I can't stop, I screamed. Would I have to jump? It could save my life, but I was scared stiff. The road stretched before me, seemingly endless, but I knew I would eventually reach the highway. I sped towards it like a bullet. Suddenly, I saw a motion, my dad. He jumped in front of the bike like a mama bear. Just as I reached him, he grabbed the handlebars. The impact was so great that the back of my bike flew into the air. For a moment, I just sat there, heart pounding like the hooves of a thousand zebras. I slowly got off the bike. I looked at my hands. They were raw and red. I looked at my dad, then hugged him. He just saved my life, I thought. My dad grabbed the bike. Are you okay? He asked, clearly concerned. Yes, I said. Thank you. Of course. As we descended the hill, I knew that if I fell, my father would be there to catch me. My name is Melanie McMurray, and I work with fourth and fifth grade students here at East Jackson Elementary in math, reading, and writing. 
Our authors continue to amaze me every day. They truly do. The energy and stamina they bring during their writing workshops is palpable. Writing has moved to the favorite list of many of our students this year. Our writers look forward to writing every day. Our writers are engaged in writing every day. And most importantly, our authors are proud of their writing. And as a teacher and facilitator, that just makes my heart full. Thank you. Thank you again to our two students who came tonight and read what you're awesome writers, but you also read your story. You told your story so well. Great job. And thank you to Miss Palmer and Miss McMurray for being here with us tonight. Thank you, Dr. Howard. Sorry we took up some time, but we sure enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you so much. How exciting is that? We are very, very fortunate to have amazing students and teachers who are coaching them along and inspiring them. Miss Palmer's here tonight. Miss Palmer, you ought to be looking forward to these kiddos coming your way. I bet you are. I don't know where I know I saw her. There she is. There she is. So thank you all very much. It's very exciting. Those of you who um, have not had an opportunity to visit our board meetings, thank you for being here tonight. And one of the things that we love to do in addition to celebrate uh, our schools is celebrate individual students. So at this time, we're gonna recognize a couple of our Rotary students and Rotary teachers. Uh, one of our, actually East Jackson High School has two sets to, to recognize tonight. So at this time, I'll call Ms. Palmer. And if you would like to introduce our Rotary students over the past two months. I don't know if I'm gonna pass this back and forth, maybe. Can you just do that? Are you comfortable with that? Yeah. Do it from here? Yeah. yeah. It's fine. Okay. It's wrong. Yeah. Okay. I told them that they could come up together. That made them a little more comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> and so I do have the pleasure of introducing September's Rotary student, who is Lauren Barrett, and October's Rotary student, Dakota Norris. And so both of them have their parents with them here tonight. So Lynn, if you would stand up and be recognized. Lynn probably recognized her. She's also a Jackson County School student. And then Miss Norris recognized her as well. We need to get the kudos for raising such wonderful young people. So a little bit about Miss Lauren. She is taking courses such as Honors Econ, Allied Healthcare, and that is our highest level in healthcare science class. Statistical reasoning, environmental science, advanced composition, weight training, and I saved, I think, the most interesting for last, and that's um, peer facilitation, which is working with our adaptive PE classes. And when I think about Lauren, I think I will always remember watching her in that particular environment where she is one on one with a particular student in the adaptive PE class who can be a bit of a challenge. Um, he likes to run away sometimes, and he likes to hit people sometimes. And Lauren has a way of managing him that is as amazing as any adult in our building. And so that is one of the things that will always stand out to me about her. She also um, volunteers with our ESP, Extra Special People Program. The other thing that will stand out to me about her is the fact that um, she has been a part of our softball program and was part of our state championship softball team. And um, she has chosen as her most influential teacher, her softball coach, Johnny Byron. And I'm gonna let her tell you a little bit about him as well as about her plans after high school. So a little bit about Coach Byron is for the past four years, Coach Byron has been more than just my coach. He's been a counselor and has given me advice, been my motivator, that has kept me driven and goal oriented. A teacher that believes in me and instilled the idea of Chubb that continues to mold me into the person that I am today. And then after high school, I'm going to head over Kong University to major in special education while playing softball. And then Ms. Anderson, if you'd like to come up as well. So again, this is Dakota Norris, affectionately known by his peers and many of his teachers as Chuck Norris. 
<laughs> Listen to the load of classes that he's taking. AP Chemistry, AP Statistics, AP Physics, um, Anatomy, and Honors Econ, and Essentials of Healthcare. So it's not enough to take one or two science courses, but he's loading up your senior year. He is a part of our football team and a part of our track and field um, team. He has academic uh, letterman status as well as the Latin Award and the Biotech Award. Um, he volunteers for Jackson County Special Olympics, so both of those two that have that in common. And if I had to think about the thing that I will remember most about him, I think it is the fact that he is so incredibly solid and very quiet. Um, he's very low maintenance, but very highly respected by both his peers and his teachers. And he chose as his most influential teacher, Ms. Emily Jefferson, no surprise in the science department. Uh, I started with Ms. Gunderson as my freshman in biology teacher, and then uh, eventually she led me to the biotech class, which is what I'm planning on taking in college at Georgia Tech, and just uh, through the healthcare pathway without dealing with patients. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. We're so proud of both these students and both these teachers. If you'll let Mr. Wester introduce oh, the Jackson County great, Animal yes, Parade. Mr. Wester. Then you are next for sure. Good evening. I have the honor of uh, introducing the Jackson County High School Rotary Student of the Month and uh, the teacher that she has nominated. And our Student of the Month is Serena Bergeron. Serena is a senior at Jackson County High School, and her uh, parents are her and Raquel, and we're grateful to have uh, Ms. Bergeron here. And just want to note that her, her brother is here as well. I'm sure he's super excited. Good to see you, Nick. Uh, he's a great student also. Uh, this year, uh, Serena has included in her schedule a, a, uh, a relatively uh, easy schedule if you really look at it. I mean, Spanish 4, AP Lit, uh, BC Calculus, which is an AP course, the second AP Calc course. Uh, honors Human Anatomy and AP Econ and AP Government are among her courses as a senior, so she has certainly taken a big bite there, but she's doing great with it. Um, sports and activities. Uh, Serena is certainly uh, an excellent example of what we hope to see in the scholar athlete at Jackson County High School. Uh, she has been inducted into the National Honor Society as well as the Beta Club, and also as part of the Spanish Honor Society. She is active in her youth group and also volunteers with ISERV Ministries. She is the current senior class representative for student council and was the vice president uh, in her sophomore year. She has been a four-year member of the Jackson County softball team and is also a four-year member of the Jackson County High School tennis team. And um, some awards and honors, uh, just a few of the things that she has, uh, has earned in her time at Jackson County. She was a, chosen as an all-region uh, tennis player, as the number one tennis player for Jackson County last year. She has been all region in softball, both her sophomore and junior year. She was the athletic director's award winner in her sophomore year, which goes to the student athlete uh, in a particular sport who has the greatest amount of character and is a great example for others. She has earned uh, college credit for her score on the AP exam for AP AB calculus, as well as AP Langs. She is currently second in her class at Jackson County High School as a senior. She has been the top scholar athlete for both softball and tennis for the past two years and has earned a Georgia Certificate of Merit. So just a few things that Serena has accomplished <laughs> so far. So many more great things to come. Uh, Serena, if you would come up just for a moment and talk a little bit about the teacher that you've chosen, Mr. Wayne Brooks, uh, as your uh, influential teacher, and also let us know a little bit about what you plan to do in the future, okay? Um, I chose Coach Brooks as my most influential teacher. Um, he's been my tennis coach uh, and my teacher, and he's really pushed me to be the best that I can, not only in the classroom, but outside of the classroom. And I think he'll thank you for being so awesome. Um, after high school, I plan to go to UGA and then eventually transfer to Emory to pursue a career in the medical field. I want to thank the board for allowing me to share some of the East Jackson High School story tonight. We are very proud of what we have going on at East Jackson High School. And this is just a little slice of it. I believe we'll start with some of our AP data. 
And so if you look at that, and I won't read all the numbers to you, but we have increased um, in 2018 the number of students who tested, as well as the number of exams that were given, and our scores on those exams. So we are excited about all of those things, especially when we think about the fact that many of our students who have traditionally been in our AP program are now in dual enrollment. So we were able to increase our AP enrollment while at the same time increasing dual enrollment, and we'll talk about that in just a moment as well. Next slide. Um, those are the numbers of students who scored threes, fours, and fives on AP exams. And um, as you will remember, most colleges will accept, um, or many colleges will accept a three. And so those students um, are looking at earning college credit based on their AP scores. A few highlights from this year's um, scores would be music theory. This was the first time that we taught that. Mr. Miguel Vista Silva taught it. And to have 67% um, of the students making three or higher is pretty amazing for someone teaching the course for the first time. It usually takes a, a teacher a good three or four years to kind of get the swing of it, but he did a phenomenal job there. And macro econ, um, we also had 67% of our students scoring a three or better. That is Miss Jocelyn Newell, and that was the second year that she was teaching that course. So we're very excited about that. And then AP biology, 92% um, of our kids made a three or better. In fact, in that particular class, all but one student made a four or a five on the AP Biology exam. And that is Mr. Matthew Dawkey, who came to us from Commerce High School. So we're very excited that he's with us. Um, and then as I mentioned, um, our AP numbers, we would have expected maybe to drop last year because we have increased our number of students in dual enrollment. Looking at this year, um, you can see the dramatic um, rise in the number of students taking dual enrollment. And again, I won't go through all of those, but in some places we have tripled or quadrupled the number of students who are taking dual enrollment classes. And so we have our kiddos up there and we also have several students who join us from Commerce High School that come and take advantage of that opportunity. Um, this year we've also begun a partnership with Lanier Tech and we have 21 students enrolled in their dual enrollment classes, many of them face-to-face -face on campus um, in healthcare, science, criminal justice, and early childhood education. So more of our students there are in college credit. SAT information, you can see we had 101 students in the graduating class for 2018 who took the SAT. And you can see our mean score um, both with the essay and without. <laughs> And then the next slide is ACT information. That information is supposed to be embargoed until Wednesday, so I'm not allowed to share it. However, I can say that we have maintained our scores from the previous year. I don't think the ACT police will get me for saying that much. And then moving on to our CQRPI information with closing the gap. Um, we are pretty proud of this score, a 75.9, and the state score is only a 70. And so we are doing a nice job with our um, special groups there. And then content mastery, our school score was a 77.7, state score was a 66.9, so again, doing pretty well there. And the next slide kind of goes to our uh, median growth percentiles. So looking at those four tested areas in English and math, um, you can see that when they come to us, we move them at East Jackson High School. Um, English is doing okay. We'd like to be doing a little better there. We did come up some in American Lit this year. Um, this particular attention to our algebra one and geometry. For the last couple of years, we've been doing a really nice job in geometry, and we are beginning to see that mimic in algebra one. We believe we have the right people in the right seats, and so we are excited to see what that team is going to do. And then I saved the best for last, our graduation rate, a 96.43. We came up from a 95.3, I believe it was, last year. Um, so we want to continue to do better than we've done in the past, but I might also add that looking at the schools in our area, we outperformed almost all of them. The only people who were anywhere close to us um, were um, West Hall had exactly the same graduation rate that we did, and uh, North Oconee had a 97. We beat everyone else, and we're really, really proud of that. <laughs> Part of that story also is looking at our subgroups and for the groups that we have in those um, students to get data on. You can see what the state target for us was and then what we actually get. Um, a couple that I would like to highlight because they tend to be our challenging population would be our economically disadvantaged. And we have about 62% of our students who fall into that category. Um, the target for us was 90%, we hit over 95. And then our students with disabilities. And we have about 16% of our students who are special education students. The state target for us was a 72. And we hit, I think it was 82. So pretty phenomenal there, I think. So we're really, really proud of that. 
And we know it is important to tell our story because if we don't tell it, somebody else will and they may not tell it the right way. And so we purchased for our staff that t-shirt that you see a picture of right there. And I hope that you see them wearing them out in the community. The t-shirt simply says 96.43%, go ahead, ask me, because we want to be able to tell our story. And so thank you for giving me this opportunity to tell part of our story tonight. to introduce to you tonight two more recipients of our Excellence in Service Award. These uh, recipients were nominated by their um, colleagues, and I just want to encourage anyone who knows of a deserving uh, staff member, community member, a business partner, uh, or volunteer in the Jackson County School System that has gone above and beyond uh, the call of duty to make sure that our students are getting the very best education and our staff is supported in the very best way possible, please nominate them for an Excellence in Service Award. You can find that uh, information on our website. So our first uh, recipient tonight is Ms. Linda Moss. She is from South Jackson Elementary and her nominator was Ms. Kathy Krebs. Ms. Moss, are you here? Come on up. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you a little bit about Ms. Moss. She is an amazing paraprofessional. She works with <laughs> students in several classrooms, and she is always on time and ready to go. Now, I don't know that because I'm at South Jackson. I know that because that's what Ms. Krebs said about you. She does a great job at communicating information back to the classroom teacher about the progress of students she works with each day. She doesn't just work on academics. She also fosters relationships with these kids so they know she cares about them. Students that work with her regularly are excited to share their progress with her and work to please her. She's able to get otherwise reluctant students to work on things that give them trouble. She's a wealth of ideas and frequently makes and brings her materials that she's found on her own to help meet the goals of the students. She's positive and caring with both staff and students. She's one of the individuals that makes a positive impact on students every day. Congratulations, Ms. Moss. next recipient is Mr. Paul Pesaresi, and he is in our transportation department. Mr. Pesaresi, are you here? He's here. Come on up. His nominator wished to remain anonymous, but I will share with you what they had to say about him. Mr. Paul Pesaresi is truly a valuable asset to the Jackson County Transportation Department. Not only does he transport our children to and from school each day, but he also works in assisting at the bus shop between his routes. He also performed labor in the shop over the summer and assisted West Jackson Middle School prepare for the new school year, becoming one of our go-to employees for anywhere help is needed. He has an inspiring work ethic and always strives to do his best no matter what the task. He goes about his day with a supremely positive outlook and has a definite can-do attitude that influences his, his co-workers to do the same. He's eager to gain new skills and soaks up new information that he is given, putting just learned information to practice quickly. Though he just began with the school system this past year, he has already earned the respect of his peers and the parents of the children he drives, and with many praising his communication and kind-heartedness. Mr. Paul is never one to ask for the attention or praise for his hard work, which is why I would like to recognize his effort and his importance to us. Congratulations. Mr. Thank you. Thank you.
It's always a, a pleasure to recognize outstanding individuals. Each year we get to be a part of the uh, school bus safety poster contest. And each year it's great for me because I actually get to see some uh, amazing up and coming artists. And this year was no different, no exception. Uh, we had um, four divisions and two of the divisions that we're gonna talk about tonight, two schools, uh, their artwork was sent to the state level and uh, we are extremely proud of those people. We want to recognize them tonight. So North Jackson Elementary, if you'll come up. And Miss Kaylee is here, if you'll come up also. And I believe Mr. Bass had a ball game tonight, so he was unable to attend. Just shows how multi-talented a lot of these individuals are. So as they come forward, um, I'm gonna let Miss Fitger, hope I pronounced that right, I apologize if I did not, okay? <laughs> I'm going to let her kind of talk about Miss Kaylee, and then we're going to present her award. Uh, the theme this year was My School Bus, the safest, safest form of student transportation. And uh, like I said, we are extremely excited. And uh, we will congratulate you very shortly. Miss Fitch, if you'll come forward, please. I'm actually going to start and tell you a little bit about Kaylee. Kaylee is a fourth grade student at North Jackson. She's very talented inside the classroom and outside the classroom. Very bright student. We're very proud of her. Both of the students worked really hard on their um, on their artwork this year. Um, we sent in about 10 different um, posters, and these two, I'm very proud of Warren and Kaylee. Kaylee's very excited, and she's always wanting to try her best and wanting to um, excel in everything that she does in the art room. So Miss Kaylee, if you'll come forward, and on behalf of Jackson County School Transportation Department, we would like to present <coughs> you being the first place winner in Division Two, and her artwork was, as I said before, sent to the state level for competition. We'd like to present you with just a certificate of achievement and say thank you, and I'll go ahead and get you to sign uh, some more artwork she does, so when she does become famous, we'll go ahead and have that. <laughs> Before we leave, uh, Mr. Bass could not be here tonight. So, Ms. Pitcher, if you want to say a few words about him, Ms. Kaylee, if you'd like to talk about him a little bit. If not, that's okay. All right, that's all right. But we do have a certificate for him, and I'd like to go ahead and present that to Ms. Dean if she'll come forward. Um, Mr. Warren's picture was very original. Uh, he did a wonderful job in his artwork, as Ms. Uh, Kaylee did. And like I said, we are seeing our up-and-coming artists. So congratulations, and I'm sorry he cannot be here tonight to receive it. We will be sure Drew going to do his tonight, but he is also talented inside the classroom as well as outside the classroom, and we're very proud of both of these students. Thank you. <laughs> the second school that uh, we sent in Division Four to our state competition is West Jackson Middle School. So if you guys will come forward, Annika and Ms. Kitchens. Dr. Conway. Once again, it's always a pleasure to recognize people that are outstanding. And in this case, uh, this young lady did a wonderful job. She had very vibrant colors in her artwork. Uh, her originality showed through, the uniqueness of the picture that she had. Uh, it was a, a very easy decision when we received this. We were looking at it and uh, I thought, you know, th this is great. And when all two or three of the judges that look at it agree with the same thing just like that, it makes the decision very easy. So uh, I want to say congratulations, but Dr. Conway, if you'd like to come forward first, and then Ms. Kitchens, if you'd like to say a few words. Well, I was thinking about what I would say about Anka, and I really think she is the epitome of what a student at West Jackson Middle School should be. Because every time she sees me in the hallway, she compliments me. <laughs> <laughs> so I really appreciate that. But she, really, she is such a positive and wonderful being, and she is just, I mean, I, I cannot say enough about her, and I'm so excited that she's won this award. Ms. Kitchens, we poached from Gum Springs. 
<laughs> Sorry. <laughs> people want to be with the cool people. Um, but um, Ms. Kitchens uh, has been with these students before, so she's um, come up with us. So I'm going to let her say a few words about Anka. Well, Anka is a delight to have in class. Um, just like Dr. Conway said, she's always uh, introducing herself. She's always complimenting. She's just a pleasure to have in class. Um, drawing is one of her favorite things to do, especially when we have uh, any kind of earned uh, reward time or incentive time, she wants to draw. So I was very excited when I heard that she had earned uh, won this award. As you can see, Dr. Conway and Ms. Kitchen share in the fact that she is an up-and-coming talented artist. And tonight we'd like to give you a certificate of achievement from our transportation department. Miss Annika Dakanasku, and I hope I did not say that wrong, but I think I might have got it right. Is that right, Miss <laughs> Kitchens? Okay. Congratulations and thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> thank you, Dr. Howard Ford. Mr. Farmer, would you do me a favor and um, pass the mic? Pass the mic <laughs> thank you so much. You can just bring it around the front. Okay. Thank you, sir. I just want to send another congratulations to those outstanding students and appreciate everyone who does everything they do to support our kids. Student success is our first priority and anything we can do to build them up and make them understand that they can achieve anything they believe they can achieve and far beyond that. So thank you to all the teachers and, and staff in this in this um, been presented an honor tonight and, and recognized, so thank you. And I want to turn it back over to you, Mr. Bryant, and we've got uh, the rest of the agenda with some consent agenda items. All right. Did you notice those kindergarten kids were programming? Did you hear that? I have a hard time with my cell phone. I can just imagine what they can do. Really proud of them. All right, well, you, using the consent agenda from items one through seven, are there any discussions or questions on those before we vote? Using the consent agenda, do I have a motion that we accept items one through seven as written? So moved. A second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Have a motion that we adjourn? Aye. A second? Aye. All in favor? Aye. Meeting adjourned. Thank you for coming.